I must say I've never seen anything quite like this. It's, wow. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. It's not something I've seen before in young kittens. It's really, really rare. Good boy. Good boy. The sneezing fits about three or four times a day. It just breaks my heart. It always happens to the special ones. This week's number five. Poor little mites, they're trying to hide. Oh. Did you get the door yeah, for me? Yeah, I'll do the door. At the Isleworth Clinic, Mary and Sue have brought in two rescue kittens that need urgent attention. Hello. Hiya. Uh, we have an appointment in the name of Guardian Angels Animal Support for these yeah. two kittens. Yeah, to see Phoebe. Yes, please. Hi. Oh, they're so cute, aren't they? They're particularly beautiful, sweet little girls, and they are such a little pair. They look so cute together. I mean, all kittens are cute, but your heart just melts when you see these two little ones. Phoebe shouldn't be too long, so if you don't mind just taking a seat. Okay, thank you. Very much. Thank, thank you. you. We got a call from a member of the public who was um, looking online, actually, for a scratching post. She came across a site where a lot of animals were being sold. She saw the pictures of these two kittens and realised that they had something wrong with their eyes. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm Phoebe. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Are you the guardian angels? Yes, we're guardian Hello. angels. Hello. 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 And we'd like you to take a look at these little people for us, please. They're so beautiful. Oh, Look at their little faces. Mm -hmm. Right. Would you like to bring them through? Yes, please. <laughs> It's great that we can help out charities that work in the local area and they're able to give the right veterinary treatment to these animals along with our help and then find them loving homes. So who am I looking at here? That's um, Tabitha. So the right one looks normal, but the left one, you can see the third eyelid coming across. It's quite evident as soon as you look at one of her eyes that there's something wrong there. It looks like the conjunctiva, which is the membrane at the side of the eye, is sort of across the cornea in a way that it shouldn't be. And I think she's got a condition called symblepharon. Which is when part of the eye which shouldn't stick to another part mm -hmm. of the eye. And it can be congenital, so they can be born with it. She would have been born with it, yeah. probably. Um, or it can be associated with herpes virus, which right. is cat flu, which is really common in strays mm -hmm. um, because they're obviously not vaccinated against it. A little bit concerning, but I'm hoping that we can do something for her. Right, let's have a look at the other one as oh, well then. One wriggle piggle. Wriggle piggle. Taking the ta <laughs> table with you. Who's this one then? And um, it's just Tamsin. Hey Tamsin. Good girl. Oh, so she's got the same condition. And hers is worse. We can definitely do surgery on the eye. Okay. Um, just to cut the membranes and allow more mobility. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed the surgery will fix that, which seems like quite a daunting thing to do to two little kittens, but hopefully it will be for the best. To give her the best chance yeah, of a, a loving forever home, yeah. it would be a good thing to try because okay. if it is a congenital problem and we do surgery, then we could cure it. Mm. That's wonderful news, mm. the fact that something can be done for them. Yeah. It's not something I've seen before in young kittens. It's really, really rare. So I think I'm going to refer it to Scott for him to have a closer look as well. And hopefully we'll be able to do surgery for these little guys. Thank you very much for your time. That's, That's okay. lovely. <laughs> it's Wonderful. lovely to meet them. <laughs> Excuse me, this away, please. <laughs> this away. Good morning, Hi. folks. Good morning. Right, they're both here. Oh, hello. Tamsin and Tabitha. Mary has returned to the Isleworth Clinic with the two rescue kittens. Mary is hoping the kitten's eyes can be cured so they'll have a much better chance of being adopted. So we've got Scott downstairs now, okay. so if you don't mind, I will no, take you these take two them. lovely girls off All your right. hands. And, uh, okay, yeah, lovely. We'll Thank touch. you very much. That's great. Bye-bye, no girls. Hope it all goes well. I'll be thinking about you all day. Oh, bless all them. All right, loves. Bye-bye, right. darling. Bye. I am concerned because there is always a risk with a general anaesthetic, but they need this surgery. Hi, Scott. Hey, yeah. Um, this is Tabitha and Tamsin from Guardian Angels. Um, I'd like you to have a little look at their eyes. Yeah. It looks like symblepharon to me, but I wanted a second yeah. opinion. Yeah. OK, well, let's get her out, shall we, and have a quick look? Yeah, sure. Tamsin is the first kitten to be examined by Scott. 
Hi, gorgeous. Hello, sweetheart. Ooh. I've seen a few of them in my career, but not as bad as that one. I mean, her eyes are nearly completely closed by that. Yeah. Phoebe's description of these eyes probably didn't do them justice. In fact, they're a lot worse than I expected them to be. Yeah, this is classic symbol for an, this kitten's had some damage to its cornea and then the vascular support structures around the eye, the conjunctiva had just gone, oh, that's a hole, I better fill it with something. Mm. And so it's stuck onto the eye. Mm. But unfortunately, it's stuck on a little bit too effectively. And now what we have is literally like a sort of fleshy curtain over the top. And we have no idea what's underneath. You can barely see any of the eye, so we don't know if it's healthy or not. We need to be just so careful because this tissue could actually be plugging a hole in a dike. And if we pull the finger out, then the whole eye can rupture. So this isn't a simple, you know, job for trying to make it look prettier. This potentially could be curtains for that eye. Yeah. So we have to try and see if we can achieve a functional eye. Mm. But worst case scenario is down the line, we might actually have to remove a whole eye, so. Yeah. You're gonna make someone a lovely little feline friend, don't you? Yeah. Eh? Once we hopefully can sort this eye out. Scott is now going to examine Tabitha to see if she shares the same debilitating eye condition as her sister. So again, we can see this eyes, the aperture itself, the, sh the size of the eye is smaller. So you can just see that very clearly. As soon as you look, you can see that one's just smaller yeah. than that one. Yeah. So I need to open this eye up a little bit as well. But mm. unlike her sister, you can actually see more of her eye. So we can't give you any promises, my love. But we'll give it a go. With vet nurse Gina helping, Scott anaesthetizes the first kitten, Tamsin, and the delicate and difficult surgery can begin. Brave girl. Brave little thing, isn't she? Yeah. She's been through a lot in her short little life. Performing this procedure is a little bit of a suck it and see moment. You sort of tread carefully knowing that at any moment it could all go very wrong. So, it's tough to know exactly where to cut. Let's just see where this goes. So that's good news. You can actually see that that is all covering the eye but actually not attached to the eye. Yeah. Well, you need to remove any of the tissue. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to. Okay, that's better than I thought it was going to be. So that shouldn't be attached to the eye. Every time she blinked or winked, just pull, pull, pull her eye constantly and just be mm. so uncomfortable. So that, that can come away now. Okay, so there's one part of that eyelid that shouldn't have been there. After the initial cut and removing of that sort of curtain out of the eye, straight away I can see this little kitten's eye for the very first time. Yep, that's great. It's really good news. Look at that nice, clear cornea, no staining whatsoever. So actually there's no ulceration to this eye whatsoever. So it's, it's literally the best result we could so have wanted. Good. So. Hmm. So that's very good for this little girl, isn't it? It's amazing. You've got the window to your soul back. Yeah. Look at that. So how are you going to make sure that that conjunctiva doesn't reattach to the surface of the eye? Ah, this is where I bring you into a little professional secret. Not many people know that we use them, but actually I'm going to be placing a, uh, a little lens, a, f a false, like a contact lens in people. Contact lenses are used in people to help them to see a little bit better, but in cats and dogs, we generally use them to protect the surface of the eye. And in these kittens' case, by placing one of these almost soft bandage lenses onto the eye, it'll help to heal them underneath, but also stop any of that conjunctiva sticking onto the eye again. So how long the kitten can wear the contact lenses is probably dependent on the kitten. We'll definitely be putting a uh, collar on her to try and stop her from flicking it out. But look, if it lasts three days, fantastic. 
We'll try and leave it in for about 10 days if possible. Two weeks, even better. But uh, we'll take what we can get. She's a kitten after all. That was some serious fiddly business, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> but you did it. Mary's going to be so happy. Good girl. Uh, you're unhappy about the new attire, aren't you? While Tamsin recovers from her operation, next it will be her sister Tabitha's turn for the tricky surgery. Okay. Let's hope we can fix your sister's eye up too, hey? So, she gets the same treatment that her sister did. Let's hope your sister's luck plays out for you. Mm. This surgery is quite fraught, actually, because although Breaking down these adhesions will reduce discomfort and pain in these cats. These adhesions are sometimes there for a very good reason. They can be plugging a hole in the cornea and by removing that adhesion, sometimes you can open a hole in the whole eye and it can rupture. So there's attachments all on the top of the eye there. All the way back. Just as we're getting our hopes up that everything has gone brilliantly with Tamsin, I start to do the procedure on Tabitha, and unfortunately her eye is much more complicated. So unlike the other one, you need to try and preserve that tissue. Yeah. Although the aperture, the hole that we can see of the eye is bigger, the eye underneath is much more damaged. There's a lot of scarring, there's some ulceration there. And once I start removing the adhesions, I see that everything, all the structures around that eye are all stuck together. It's very complicated indeed. So there was that sort of kink in the eyelid there. Mm. So I'm trying to break down whatever's caused that. Yeah. I think it's probably all part and parcel with the all these structures sticking to each other, it's just yeah. sort of concertina the eyelid a little bit. Mm. Like her sister, Tabitha is also getting a contact lens inserted over her eye to protect it while it heals. Tabitha should get pretty good vision once the corneal ulcers have healed, but some of them will leave scars. There's scars already, but there's also damage to the protective surface of the eye, the cornea as well. So they'll take a while to heal. When they do, if they leave scars, it's like having a smudge on your glasses that you can't rub out. You know, it's like when you've got an annoying scratch on your sunglasses, you know, you're annoyed about it for a day and then afterwards you get used to it. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna keep Tamsin and Tabitha in with us for a couple of days and it will give us the best chance of making sure that they're kept calm and quiet for as long as possible. Here she is. You two can start seeing eye to eye for once, can you? Yeah? Oh. It's all right, sweetheart. Mary from the Guardian Angels charity has returned to collect the two homeless kittens. Good morning, ladies. Hello, morning. Mary. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are my lovely girls? They're doing really well. Fantastic. I'm here to pick up Tamsin and Tabitha, the two little kittens that have had eye operations. Obviously, I'm very excited to see them. I know it's been quite a complicated procedure. Here they are. Hello, girls. Oh. How are you? Um, oh, wonderful. Oh, Missing you, fantastic. no doubt. Fantastic. Hello. Can you show me your, your new eye? You are? Oh, I'm so lucky. Thank you. It's really nice to reunite Tabitha and Tamsin with Mary today. Good girls. They stayed in a couple of days after the surgery just for some extra TLC and some eye meds. So I think Mary's been apart from them a little bit longer than she had wanted to. So I'm sure she'll be very delighted to take them home today and yeah, give them some love. So we'll get Tabitha out first. Okay. Um, because Thank I know we, I know we spoke at the time yes, that um, we did. and we, it was a much longer up. Wasn't yeah, it? we thought she was actually going to be the easier of the two, but then it ended up being a much more complicated surgery. Mm. We've already started to notice an improvement with the eye. She's starting to open the eye now, and like the amount of discharge has really decreased as well. Wonderful. So, so we're hopeful that it's definitely going in the right direction. Well, bless them, they've been through so much in their short lives. They're only about five months old now. And it's amazing now that we now see, hopefully, the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's get your big sister out. Hello, so, big sister. So we thought Tamsin was 
more severely yeah, affected because she had the membrane over almost the whole of her eye. But actually, when we cut it away under anaesthetic, it, she actually had a really healthy eye underneath. Oh, fantastic, that's great news. Yeah. You're both very, very lucky girls, aren't you? Yeah. Both got two hopefully working eyes each now, which is a step in the right direction. So we're not quite there yet. Mary's got the eye meds to go home, so she'll have to be working hard three times a day to get those in. But now that they're home, Mary can start looking for a forever home for these two. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to all the team and Aww. all the care and love that you've shown them. Thank you very <laughs> right. much. Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. Right. You're going to come home then? Yeah. Oh, bless them. Come on, girlies. Let's get you home. Number four. It was a surprise when we saw it. It looks like she's sort of seen a ghost or something. It looks really terrible. Two-year-old Ali has been brought into Sash with a frightening case of bulging eyes. I don't like the thought of any, you know, problems with blindness. We wanted to get it fixed up straight away. I, I must say I've never seen anything quite like this. It's, no. Wow. That's unbelievable. When did this all come about? Probably a week ago. OK, and what's, just, what um, happened? She just started to get a little bit of white muck in the corner oh, of Oh, she's eye. looking at me, so I startled. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's a bit bizarre. of a shock, isn't it? <laughs> I've seen animals that have inflammation in other parts of their muscles, but I've never seen it affecting the muscles around the eyes. I know if it was one eye affected, then I wouldn't be as shocked, but yeah. the fact that both eyes are, are like that, I mean, she looks like a, a Google-eyed fish. She does. Yeah, she does. She doesn't seem to be in any pain. She seems like she can see. I really need to get an ophthalmologist to have a look at this one. Come on, sweetie. Look, I see another doctor. Look at this dog's eyes. Oh, my God, you poor sweetheart. Hello, darling. Do you know what it is? No. <laughs> I'm going to go try find Kelly and see if she can tell me. I've never seen anything quite like it. What do you think of the eyes? It's scary. Amazing, actually. it is. <laughs> Ellie's bulging eyes are the talk of the hospital. <laughs> it's fantastic. fantastic. This is actually a really interesting medical case. I've never seen anything quite like this. Miss Ellie, do you think we could take a look at these eyes of yours, yeah. huh? Fortunately for the Labrador, eye specialist Kelly Caruso isn't as shocked as the rest of the staff. She's got a nice response to the light. Well, I think the key with her is her age and her breed. And this is the immune system attacking the muscles that surround the eye, okay. inflaming them, and making the eyes bulge forward. An extraocular polymyositis. What these dogs typically present is non-painful, visual. They look really kind of creepy, um, but we usually can fix them. And we can put her on some oral steroids and a little lubricant in these eyes. And I bet she's a new dog. These little blue tablets are going to make her look a lot better within about 72 hours, oh, which is a pretty quick turnaround. It is. I will be beautiful in a few days, Mum. <laughs> I promise I'll have my beauty back. You're beautiful anyhow, aren't you? I will never forget that look of surprise on Ellie's face when she walked in the door with her eyes bulging out of her head. I'm just glad to find that they can treat it. So that was a good thing. A really big load off our mind. She'll probably get a big cuddle, big hug, maybe a treat. <laughs> this week's number three. Nearby, emergency vet Lisa Chimes is also worried about her puppy. Today is Lucas's big day. My little boy is getting castrated. And for most dogs, this is a fairly routine procedure. But for Lucas, he's got a rare condition called cryptorchidism, which basically means that his testes are missing. They haven't dropped down. <laughs> now, if we don't go in there and find them, he's got a 10 times greater chance of developing cancer. And that's pretty scary. It's quite pathetic because I lose all sense of being a vet. I've become a neurotic mother and I've been worrying all night about him having the surgery today. Look! Want to go walkies? For them to be in pain or go through any risky procedures just freaks me out. Come on! Yeah. 
I'm a mess. Is he being braver than you are? I'm <laughs> pathetic. Lisa's puppy Lucas is about to undergo surgery to try to fix his rare condition, crypt orchidism, more simply known as missing testicles. Oh, be brave. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Surgeon yeah, Andrew Marchewski has the unenviable job of operating on his colleague's beloved dog. He's got nothing. <laughs> There's nothing. No. The problem is, is when they're, as you know, when they don't come down, they stay really small. Yeah. And they're really hard to find. Yeah. And his are never going to be big in the first place. Dog Lisa does nice. have another concern. Yeah. It's just a little bit embarrassing. Okay. I have this, this, um, worry that maybe, maybe, he could be a pseudo-hermaphrodite. <laughs> Hermaphrodites <laughs> have the reproductive <laughs> organs of both males and females. I'll tell you the reasoning for this. Right. Male dogs in the park mm. have been having relations with him. Could it be possible <laughs> that he's releasing some female hormones? <laughs> well, I guess it's possible. So maybe when you're in there, mm. if you want to just have a look for some ovarian looking tissue. Yeah. Right. Maybe he's been enjoying the attention. Poor Lucas, you're just a special little boy. I have to castrate and love him. Don't hurt him. I'll do my very best. We're all right. I'm not going to cry. Lisa's puppy Lucas is on the operating table, and surgeon Andrew Marchewski is feeling the pressure. Well, it's a lot more risky than if it was just a straightforward castration, because we might have to open him right up. And I think I've just caught sight of it near somewhere. If they're not found and removed, it greatly increases the risk of cancer. I've got the first one, so that's a good start. Now we'll just get it tied off. Got to be a little careful because there's a couple of little vessels around here that uh, if you nick them, they can bleed quite a lot. And I don't think that would please Mrs High Maintenance out there. I can't find the second one. It's hiding from me. So it's making my life a little bit more difficult. I'm going to have a late lunch. I found it. Is it there? It's there. It's sitting just near the bladder. So it sort of got three quarters of the way that it should have got and uh, stopped. Ran out of puff. Good news for Dr Chimes. Uh, I can confirm there are no girly bits, so Lucas is definitely a boy. It's a boy. It's a boy? It's a boy. Hey, he's a boy now. <laughs> so Lucas is not a hermaphrodite. He's really That's a the boy. Good news. The bad I don't news, know why he's maybe he's not he's allowed just home that way tonight. Oh yeah, right. He's staying overnight. No, I'll be taking that he's trip pump overnight. home. That pump will come home. Staying overnight. <laughs> can I see him? Yeah. Yeah. You can see him. Okay. Come on. Oh, little Lukey. Oh, baby boy. I feel like I'm an owner. It's really bizarre being the one getting all emotional, <laughs> saying good night. Complete role reversal for me. He's a sleepy boy. I've been putting this off for so long and I'm just so happy that it's over and I can now look forward and he can recover and it's all in the past. Oh! A present for you. They're quite big. <laughs> They're not bad. Lucas. Excellent. I can prove to everyone that he is a boy. Lucas has recovered quickly from his delicate operation and is back home with Lisa and Nelson watching his favourite TV show. These boys are my life. They're my children. I would do anything for them. <laughs> Number two. I've got Lulu to see Dr. Chris, please. Okay, yeah. no problem. We'll get Lulu on the scales there, please. Yep, yeah. sure. Lulu, this way, Kim has arrived at the Bondi Clinic, desperate for help for her two-year-old Labradoodle, Lulu. She's having these dreadful sneezing attacks um, three or four times a day. When I take her for walks, you know, she tires out easily and is quite lethargic. 
so it's definitely not normal for a young pup. Are you a good girl? Yeah. Why aren't you? Hello. How are you going? Oh, hello. Why are you? Hello, I'm Chris. Oh, Kim. Nice to meet you, Kim. And this, this is, is Lulu. Lulu. All right, come on through. All right, darling. It's all right. I've been told that Kim and Lulu are in here because Lulu has been experiencing a lot of sneezing. Come on. Hello, Dr. Chris. Now, go. normally sneezing isn't a reason to rush into the vet, so there must be something very different about this case. She has these um, sneezing fits about three or four times a day where she'll sneeze for about 15, 20 times and um, nasal secretions goes flying everywhere. Yeah. I've got to give Kim some credit here because a lot of people just look at that and see a dog sneezing and think, oh, there's just something in the air that stirred her up but it seems to me to be something more serious. And it's only um, from this nostril. I mean, you can see there's a bit of gunk there now. And it is almost like she's trying to get something out? Yes, or you think something's stuck there. Mm. Good girl. So a nice grey, pinky colour in there, which is normal. We go across to the other side. It looks a little bit more raw. We've also got that whitey discharge coming out of that nostril. The real challenge for me now is trying to work out what is actually happening inside that left nostril that is causing these sneezing fits that are apparently something to behold. Oh, here we go. Oh, look, look at this. Yep, yep. At Bondi, at Chris breath. is trying to find out why Labradoodle Lulu is having massive sneezing fits. Wow. Yeah. That was extraordinary. That isn't just a normal sneeze. That is a full on experience. The one upside is it's given us a sample. It's given us a lot of samples. What I might do is actually. It's all right, darling. It's all get right. Get a bit of that. It's all right. And it's put it's that under the microscope <laughs> and see what we can find. Okay. Chris is hopeful the sample will provide vital clues as to the cause of Lulu's explosive sneezing. Now I can see the few cells that line the nostril and some pus cells, but that's really about it. So really the, the cause of all this isn't sitting on this slide. Because Lulu's sneeze sample is inconclusive, Chris decides a more thorough investigation is needed. I think the most useful thing for Lulu right now mm -hmm. would be to go and have a little camera go up inside her mouth, mm -hmm. then do a U-turn and come back down the back of her nose. Oh, okay. So what I'd like to do is send you up to Sash. Okay. And get them to, to perform some endoscopy on her. Right on. Right now, you know, she could have a little bit of grass. She could have a solid colony of, of fungus that's growing in there and irritating her nose. Mm. Or the other, other possibility, which, you know, I, I have to mention, um, is something that isn't so nice, which is something like, like a tumour. I can see Kim's whole demeanour change the moment I mention the fact it could be a tumour, but you have to flag these things. I hope, like hell, it's not. If Lulu did have something that was slow growing and just occasionally pressing on the inside of her nose, you would see sneezing like this. All right, thanks, Kim. Okay, thank Good you. Luck. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Labradoodle Lulu is making a dramatic entrance. All right, darling, all right. For emergency oh, vet Dr. Right. Dave oh. Collins, it's a noisy demonstration oh. of the two-year-old oh. symptoms. Okay. <laughs> Shared it with us. Yeah. yeah. That's what she's been doing. You know, she sneezes and almost convulses 20 times. Chris is hopeful further tests at SASH will provide an answer to Lulu's chronic sneezing. Now this way first. This way. So we're going to put her through the CT machine and that'll give us a good look at her whole nose, the internal structures from the frontal sinuses to the, the rest of the nasal cavities. Mama's going to stay, OK? Be a good girl. All right. All right, we'll look after her for you. Thank you. Okay. Come on, Lulu. Thank you. Thanks. 
I know she's in really good hands here and, and Dave's going to do everything he can to, you know, make her right and hopefully uh, it'll be a good result. Good girl. Owner Kim is facing the possibility that her precious girl could have a tumour. I wish I was there being able to hold a paw for her. The right hand side is full of air, which is normal, but this left is, is completely abnormal and must be giving her a hell of a headache. I'm a bit worried there's a bit of, bit of tissue build up in the back of those sinuses. Um, so we probably need to, to have a look up there to see if there's a tumour. To test for any abnormal growths, iodine contrast dye is being injected into Lulu's veins. As we go to the next study with the contrast, it should tell us whether this tissue is, is just mucus and discharge or whether there's actually a tumour up there. It's a really abnormal nose. We'll just give some contrast now and I'll set up the next one. At SASH, Lulu the Labradoodle is undergoing a CT scan to discover the cause of her sneezing fits. The nose is really angry there and the mucosa is really inflamed. Owner Kim is terrified that Lulu's sneezing could be due to a tumour. A bit nervous and anxious. Yeah, I hope they'll be able to sort it out today. There's a lot of discharge. Must be giving her a hell of a headache. All right, we've found that the fine bony structure of the nose is, is, is in really good shape and if there was a tumour or even a really nasty fungus, they'd be destroyed. So I'm, I'm really pleased that cancer's pretty much off the list. But it's not good news just yet. Dave's now going to insert a small camera into Lulu's nose to search for more clues. Let's have a look. We'll get that in the back. So the endoscope enables us to have a look behind the back of the soft palate. Uh, we're just looking for any kind of foreign body or infection or fungal problems. Yes. Nothing up there that shouldn't be up there. With still no firm answers, Dave now needs to take a tissue sample. Crab. Good little sample, Linda. Once we get the biopsy results, we should know exactly the best way to treat her and, and stop that snot and those sneezing fits, which must be just horrible for her. Hi, Kim, how are you? Hi, hello. Good news, everything looks pretty good. So I don't think there's a tumour in there. Oh, thank so you. there's a lot of snot in there, so Lulu's gonna have a bit of a headache. All right, Lulu, it's time to go home, darling. How's your nose feeling, is it all right? Good girl, let's go home. Wanna go see Mum? Come on. Where's your mum? Where's your mum? <gasps> Lulu! Hello, darling. Hello. Hello, baby girl. It's a happy reunion, but the cause of Lulu sneezing still isn't clear. So now an anxious Kim will have to wait for the biopsy results. Okay, darling, let's go home. To walk into Sneeze Central. Chris is making an important home visit to see sneezing Labradoodle, Lulu. Hello. <gasps> Hello. How are you? Oh, I've been waiting to see you. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Lulu. <laughs> it's hard to forget what happened last time I saw Lulu. Look at my dress. Wow. Yeah. I think that local dry cleaners got years of business out of that one episode, but on a serious side, it really showed just how much this was affecting her. How's Lulu? Um, look, not much better, although, you know, she looks fine today. But, but she still um, has the occasional yeah. stasic fit. Today, Chris is delivering the sash biopsy results and hopefully a solution for Lulu. Do you want the full works burger of a veterinary term? Yep, sure yeah. do. Lymphocytic plasmacytic rhinitis. I thought that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I knew you had money on that. <laughs> yeah. No, essentially what it is is her nose is becoming irritated and instead of just handling that in the normal way, 
her body is freaking out and sending in all these cells into her nose, which is making her nose irritated, even more inflamed. And so instead of just a simple sneeze when it becomes irritated, she has those full sneezing fits. Mm. Oh, okay. Lulu can now start on medication to control her sneezing fits. Open, Lulu. Good girl. How about that? I'm feeling very relieved that it's, you know, it's nothing more serious and it can be treated with, um, with these two types of medication. All right, so All right. we'll talk soon. Okay. And we'll hopefully it'll be the last of the sneezing. Yeah, yes. It'll take a couple of weeks for these medications to truly work their magic, but hopefully the next time I see Lulu, it'll all be quiet on the sneezing front. Really? Over there, over you go. Yeah. Get it, get it, get it. So Kim, I'm seeing stripes which hide stains and red which shows every single stain. So which way is it? Are we better or are we not? As for Labradoodle Lulu, it's been a month since she started medication to control her sneezing. It's been miraculous. Great. Those, so the medications work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, within well, within two days, she had cut down to like half of the sneezes. Yeah. And within four days, they were gone completely. Wow. I mean, oh, it's just you know, like such a relief to me, you know. So I guess it was just a matter of her own nose realizing it didn't need to react the way it was. Mm. So I'm relieved for you, but of course mm. I'm. Even more relief, Lulu, who yeah. doesn't have to go through that ordeal or that experience. Yes. Yeah. So it's all been worth it. We're all happy, yes. Yeah. Oh, she's worth it. You feeling better? Hmm? What do you think? Happy? Mm. Wow. At least it's not snotty. <laughs> and this week's number one. Any other cats at home? One female. And you recently lost his little mate, was that? Yeah. Coco, a rescue cat, has just been admitted to the Bondi Referral Hospital sash. Hey Coco, take a look at you. Deirdre saved him from death row at a shelter six months ago. I take him for walks on the lead and everybody stops and wants to pat him and he's always making friends with kids. Um, yeah, they love him. Lisa suspects anemia and takes a sample to check Coco's red blood cell count. Oh, the blood looks very watery. I'm just really worried that it's going to end up badly. Yes. For Deirdre, this situation is made so much worse because one of her other cats died suddenly only a few months ago. I don't think I could handle another one dying on me. Oh dear, it's 8%. 8% is extremely low. I mean, I would expect it in a cat to be in the, in the 30s um, and he's got a red count of 8%. So that is not sustainable with life. He needs to have a transfusion tonight. Until I know that everything's gonna be all right, yeah, and it's nothing underlying, I'll worry. Here, use the pipette. Three drops of sample into a new tube. Coco is suffering from severe anemia, but Lisa has decided to carry out more tests. Before I give Coco a blood transfusion, I need to rule out two other possible culprits, and one of them is feline AIDS, and the other one is feline leukaemia virus, which is quite rare. Now, both of these diseases can be fatal, so for Deidre's sake, I really hope the results come back negative. So it's a 10 minute wait now, it's going to feel like a lifetime. Yeah, I'm pretty worried. <laughs> it's positive. So beautiful Coco has cat leukaemia and <laughs> I almost can't believe it. It is so rare and there is no treatment. Sadly, Coco's owner Deirdre was never told there is a vaccination available for cat leukaemia. 
The irony is that Coco still looks so well. I haven't got good news for you, beautiful boy, with your beautiful blue eyes. Coco's a year and a half old, he's a baby. Deidre's just lost her other cat six months ago from perhaps the same thing. It just breaks my heart. It always happens to the special ones. Deidre, I've got some news for you that's not so good. It's an extremely rare disease in Australia and unfortunately Coco's positive to that. Okay, all right, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow then. Okay, take care, bye. She said to me, I can't believe I've got the prospect of losing three cats in seven months. Her other cat at home is not vaccinated for this, and that's pretty highly contagious. So she's going to bring him in tomorrow for us to... bring her in tomorrow for us to do a test on her, and we'll see. <sighs> she's just in shock. Good boy. What? You're like a puppy dog. Don't get out, there's a big puppy dog around there. <laughs> See? She's not um, she's not as forthcoming as Coco. Deirdre has brought in Coco's sister. She's desperately hoping Chantal has been lucky and not caught the deadly leukemia virus from her brother. I'm not gonna, you know, get really, really worried until I find out. There's something wrong with her, that'll be it. I don't think I'll be able to have more pets. Yeah, I think that'll be it, that'll do it. I like your children. Oh, hello, baby. You look I'm gonna take Chantelle yep. out the back, mm -hmm. get some blood from her. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good girl, Chantelle. I think there's quite a high chance that Chantelle's going to be positive for feline leukaemia virus just because that she's in such close contact with Coco who's got the disease. There's still a chance that she hasn't so that's what I'm hoping for. Should be enough. In 10 minutes Deirdre will know Chantelle's future. Can we wait? I just hate waiting for this. Another minute to go. So far it is negative, so it's just great. I just... It's negative. I am just so happy and relieved. I mean, I was trying to stay positive, but the odds of Chantelle getting feline leukaemia as well were so high. And now finally I can give Deidre some good news. I'm so excited. I'm just going to go tell it right now. You're smiling. I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's negative. Very good. So, it's good. That's good news. <laughs> so now what do we do with Coco? Coco is still infectious. So if Deirdre wants to take him home, he will have to be quarantined away from Chantelle. I don't know what the right thing for you to do is, whether you should take him home or whether you should leave him here. Medically, it's safer for him to be here, but emotionally, it's better for him to be at home. Yeah, maybe not if it's only for a couple of days. Yeah, Okay. spend a few days with him. I think that's lovely. Yeah. It's just going to be hard keeping to them separate. Too. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's something you've got to do if you want to have Chantel around. Yeah, mm. yeah. that's right. So why you just enjoy him and call me if you have any problems at all? Oh, I will. Okay. Thank you. I don't think this was a tough decision for Deidre. I think she knew straight away that all she wanted was to have Coco home. Oh, Bye, gorgeous boy. Even if it's only for a limited time. I'll take him home and give him cuddles and 
la fin. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. That way. Yeah. <laughs>